know, I asked God to give me wisdom. It turns out my middle name is Solomon. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I start each day reading from the book of Proverbs. I end each day reading from the book of Proverbs. And interestingly enough, uh, that, that tells me that God has a sense of humor because he, he knew I was going to have this great sense of affinity for the book of Proverbs, so he made my parents give me the middle name Solomon. But also, when Solomon became the king of Israel, the first big challenge he had that brought him great fame, two women claimed to be the mother of the same baby. What did he advocate? He said, divide the babies and he became very well-known. Well, that's why I became well-known when I divided babies, too. So I think God had a sense of humor. <laughs> when my grades were around, I was an A student at that time, but I realized at that moment that with a temper like that, my options were three. Reform school, jail, or the grave. None of those options appealed to me. So, you know, I just locked myself up in the bathroom and I started praying and I said, Lord, I can't deal with this temper. And I picked up my Bible and I started reading from the book of Proverbs. That was the first day that I started doing it and I've been doing it every day since then. Because it had all these verses in it about anger and uh, it seemed like they were all applicable to me. And uh, while I was there, it, you know, I had a revelation. And that revelation was that the reason I was always angry is because I was always in the center of the equation. So just step out of the center of the equation and then everything won't be directed at you. And then you won't be angry. And also you'll be able to look at things from other people's points of view. And also, you know, where I lived, you know, it was sort of like a macho thing. You get angry, you kick down the wall and you punch in the window, you know, and it makes you into a big man. But, you know, I came to understand that when you react like that, it actually is a sign of weakness because it means that other people and the environment can control you. And I decided that I didn't want to be that easily controlled. And uh, I've never had another problem with temper since that day. Once I recognized that I had the ability to pretty much map out my own future based on the choices that I made and the degree of energy that I put into it, you know, life was wonderful at that point. I used to hate my life up until that point because I, I hated being poor. I hated the environment. But once I came to that realization, I didn't hate it anymore. It's sort of like if I said to you, put your foot in that ice bucket. You would hate to do that. But if you knew you could take it right back out, it wouldn't be such a chore. And uh, so I saw my situation then as being temporary, knowing that I had full power to change it, and uh, that completely changed my outlook. The human brain is the thing that makes you who you are. And I, I never get over my awe of the brain. You know, when I open up, you know, this, this week I was uh, doing a hemispherectomy on a child, and, and I'm looking at that brain, and that's an operation where we remove half of the brain to stop intractable seizures. But I'm saying, this is the thing that makes this person who they are. And, you know, if I were to expose my brain and expose your brain and put them side by side, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And yet, we're very, very different people. And no one can truly understand that. Um, you know, the, the people who talk about, well, you know, it's all logically sequenced and... You know, you have these biochemicals and they got together and a cell was formed and then, and then because of external forces that cell went in this direction. And, and over millions and millions of years, you know, we evolved into this incredible organism uh, based on natural selection and survival of the fittest. Well, that's all nice and good to say, but that really doesn't even come close to explaining the human brain because if it were just survival of the fittest, then none of us would care about anybody else. We'd only care about ourselves. There would be no such thing as a person who was self-sacrificing in order to help somebody else. So, you know, there's a lot more to our brains than just the neurons and the synapses. Uh, and there's an intangible aspect, which is called the mind and the spirit. And, uh, and the thing about the human brain is you've got all of these complex 
billions and billions of interconnections and neurons, which in and of itself is fascinating. And then you throw on top of that the whole concept of the mind and the spirit, and it becomes a vast, vast laboratory in which you can work for a millennium and still never get very far. <laughs> and that's what drew me to it, because uh, I knew that I could find some things that, that were new. The American dream to me means that you have the ability to determine where you're going. You have the ability to formulate your dream, and you have the ability to put in motion all the building blocks that will help you to achieve it. And, you know, I am so grateful that I was born in America because I've had the opportunity to travel throughout the world. And I must say, you know, sometimes it's exciting, you know, to go to Paris or to go to Egypt or to go, you know, anywhere else, China. But there's no place like home. And there's no place that really affords you the same types of opportunities that we have. And it's just a matter of how hard we want to work. And, you know, I would go so far as to say, in America, you can take somebody who's very successful, who has the right mindset, and you can take everything away from them and put them on the street and they can be a bum, and they'll be right back up there in a couple of years. Because all it requires is the right mindset and the willingness to work. And, uh, you know, people who realize that are already halfway there to realizing their American dream.